Hello all, welcome back. In this one, we're going to set up our Selenium WebDriver in Eclipse using Maven so that we can work with Selenium WebDriver APIs to automate the web applications. This is the first and foremost important thing. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do here is we need to open Eclipse. And even before you open Eclipse, you need to make sure that you should have Maven installed in your system and you should also have Maven plugin installed on your Eclipse. If you don't know how to do that, please pause this video, click on the card on the top right hand side of the video and set up Maven on your system first. Then come back to this video. And if you already have those things set up on your system in Eclipse, let's move forward. In the Eclipse, we're going to first click on File, New and you might see this Maven project right here if you have the plugin installed and everything. Even if not, then click on Other and from here, expand Maven and select Maven project. If you have a lot of things here and you don't see it right away, you can also type Maven here, okay? Select Maven project, click on next. We can use the default workspace location. If you wanna use some other directory, you can always click on the browse button. It's gonna open the Windows System Explorer and you can select any directory you want. This is just asking where do you wanna create your project, okay? Then I'm gonna click on next. Right here on the catalog, we're gonna select a different option. Click internal, we're gonna select the internal option in this dropdown and then by default, Maven archetype quick start 1.1 is selected. If it is not selected for you, then go ahead and click on this one to select it. Click next. Now we have to enter group ID and artifact ID. Group ID is a unique ID. Usually it's the name of the organization. So I'm gonna type, let's code it here. If you're working in a company, you can type that name. If you're working on a hobby project, feel free to use your own name also. It really doesn't matter that much. And you will notice whatever I typed in group ID, it has automatically typed in package as well. So what happens is Maven is gonna use the group ID and artifact ID to create the first default package for us. It is again not important because we can always delete it, so don't worry about it. And now in the artifact ID, we have to type a name. Artifact ID again has to be unique and artifact ID is gonna be the name of your project also. So whatever name you wanna give to your project, provide it in artifact ID. And since it's gonna be the name of the project, I'm gonna use the first letter capital for every word. The name I'm gonna use is Selenium WD Tutorial. And you will notice that the package field is also updated to have group ID dot artifact ID. And here we're gonna click on finish. You can see in the console below that it's processing and it might take a few seconds or a minute to create the project for you. I'm gonna expand the console right here at the bottom. It stopped. What it is doing here is it's generating the project in interactive mode. If you see this, what it's doing is it's just confirming the properties and the configurations that we provided. Group ID, artifact ID, version and package, okay? If we confirm this, we can just simply type yes or Y and then hit enter. And now you can see the build succeeded and the project is created on the left hand side. Now I'm gonna expand the project that's created and right here you will see these different folders that's created here source main java and source test java if we expand both of them we're gonna see the package that's by default created let's code it selenium wd tutorial it's the same package name under both the locations and under these there's gonna be a app.java and app test.java what happens is maven thinks that you're gonna use the same project for both development and testing purpose that's why it creates two locations we can safely delete the development one we don't really need it we can delete this package and the file also is deleted and we can also delete the file app test.java and then we're gonna rename this package right click go to refactor rename i'm gonna use a simple name here basic web click ok and if you want to create more packages you can simply click on source test java right click this one new and create package this way you can create any number of packages you don't have to select this one please do not select this okay I'm gonna cancel right now. Now one thing very important that I see here is by default it assigned JRE system library 1.5 to my project. We know that Selenium requires at least Java 8 which means JDK 1.8. So I'm gonna go ahead on the project, right click, go to properties, come to libraries tab and then I'm gonna remove this JRE system library from here. And then I'm gonna click on add library. I need to add a JRE system library. And then either I can say workspace default but I don't know what is the default right now. So I'm gonna say execution environment. And from here, I'm gonna select the one that I installed on the system. I remember that I installed Java 17 on the system. That's why I'm gonna select this one. 
Now, when you install Java, you should know what version you installed for Java. So don't select anything which is not installed on your system. Make sure you know which Java version you installed and select that version. I'm going to select the Java 17. Click finish and you will see the JRE system library with Java 17 is added here. Click apply and close and we are good with the JRE here. Now let's go ahead and click the first test class for us. I'm going to call it first test class. Again, since it's a class, please follow the convention. Make sure you have the first letter of every word as capital. I'm going to select public static void main, click finish. Right here, I'm going to type the very basic code to open a browser. I'm going to say web driver, driver equals to new Firefox driver. And we will see that there is a red line under web driver and Firefox driver. And when we mouse over on them, we see options to create these classes, but we don't see an option to import any statement. So what we need for Selenium, we need all the Selenium jar files to be able to work with Selenium. How do we get them with Maven? Let's go ahead and explore that. For any Maven project, the heart and the root of the Maven project is the pom.xml. Open this file. There's going to be different views at the bottom of this file. Overview, dependencies, dependency hierarchy, effective pom and pom.xml. Make sure you are on pom.xml, okay? Under this, you're going to see a lot of different configurations and you'll also see what we initially provided. Group ID, artifact ID, packaging, the name of the project, right? And there you will see dependencies. Dependencies is the section where we provide what jar files we want may want to download for us. We can provide as many dependencies as we want. There has to be a different dependency section for every jar file. By default, Maven has already added JUnit for us. Whether we need it or not, it doesn't matter. We can always delete it. Since this is already added by Maven, let's expand the Maven dependencies section here. And what we see here is JUnit 3.8.1 jar file is already downloaded. Now what we need here is we need the Selenium jar files. So we're going to open the browser, type MVN repository, go to mvnrepository.com. This is the Maven repository website. And right here, we're going to search for Selenium. Since we're working with Selenium Java, this is the one we are interested in. org.seleniumhq, Selenium, Selenium Java. And we're going to see all the available versions on this page. Whenever you're watching this video, whatever is the latest version, you can go ahead and download it. A lot of times you may also see some versions with alpha and beta. I would say don't download any alpha or beta versions. Always download something that's stable. So for the 4.9.0, the current one, I'm not seeing anything like that, which means this is a stable version. I'm going to click on this and then I need to click on this text box. As soon as I click on this, it already copies the complete dependency in the clipboard. Come back to Eclipse under dependencies, hit enter and paste whatever you have copied. I'm going to hit tab to indent it. Now that's the only thing we need to add. Once I save this file, Maven is going to go ahead and download the jar file for Selenium. And it's also going to go ahead and download all the required jar files for us. We don't really have to type them or download them separately. I'm going to save this file and look at the left side. Boom. All the jar files are downloaded by Maven. It makes it very easy for us to download and manage the dependencies. Now imagine tomorrow if I have to download some other version. What I can do is I can do 4.8.3 because I know that's a valid version. You can always go back to MVN repository and verify what are the valid versions. And right here, let's find the Selenium jar file. So right here we can see Selenium Java 4.9.0. I'm going to save this pom.xml file again and Maven is going to build and automatically delete the older version and download 4.8.3 for me. There you go. Let me expand it again and we can see here. Selenium Java 4.8.3 is downloaded and the previous version is gone. So that's how easy it makes the job for us for managing the jar files. I can again go ahead and switch back to the latest version, save the file, and then I'm going to go to the first test class. Since we have the jar files downloaded by Maven, now I'm going to hover my mouse on WebDriver. It still doesn't show me any option to actually import the statements. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import them manually. I'm going to say import arg.openqa.selenium.webdriver and I'm going to save the file. As soon as I import this statement, the error under the web driver goes away and we are able to import this statement because the jar files exist. If we try to import this statement without adding the jar files, then it will not work. Okay. Now let's try to hover mouse on Firefox driver and there you go. Now Eclipse becomes smart. Since we added the import statement for web driver, now Eclipse knows that we're working with Selenium and as soon as I hover my mouse under Firefox driver, it gives me an option to import Firefox driver from org.openqa.selenium.firefox. I'm going to click on this and it has added the 
import statement for me. I'm going to say driver dot get https dub 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 dot let's code it com and save the file. This is our basic test. What we are doing here is we're just going to open Firefox browser and open this URL. Now we're not going to create any framework or anything in this lecture. We just want to see how we can create our first project using Maven. Save the file, right click, run as Java application. And there you go. It brought up the browser. It opened let's code it com on the browser and our first test is successful. That's pretty much it. That's all we wanted to do. Don't worry about these red messages. These are not errors. These are just warnings coming from Gecko driver and it doesn't interfere with the automation. We have successfully set up our first Selenium web driver project using Maven. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share with your friends. Please let me know in the comments below about the topic you want me to make the next video on. And don't forget to subscribe my channel for more such interesting videos. Signing off and I'll see you in the next video.